Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over another digital first manga. This is going to be Space Brothers, otherwise known as Uchu Kyodai, by creator Chuya Koyama. The series is 41 volumes and ongoing. The English publisher is Kodansha, with the Japanese publisher also being Kodansha. This series is serialized in the Seinen magazine Morning. Morning has multiple other titles under its belt, uh, with notable publications including Naoki Urasawa's Billy Bat, Panates by Makoto Yukimura, as well as Vagabond by Takehiko Inoue, which is currently on hiatus, which makes the only other currently serializing title that we're seeing in English out of Morning being Fumi Yoshinaga's What Did You Eat Yesterday? Let's go over the synopsis for Space Brothers. Two brothers looked to the starry skies as children and made a promise. Now, in the year 2025, the younger brother, Hibito, is carrying his out. He's an astronaut who has been selected as a crew member for mankind's first long-term base on the moon. Meanwhile, the older brother, Muta, has just been fired from his job and is unemployed, but decides to trust himself just one last time. A text message from Ah, uh, this first volume focuses mostly on Muta with some cuts to Hibito here and there. But Muta's the older brother down on his luck as he tries to move forward with his life after losing his job for headbutting his boss. The reason he headbutted his boss? The boss was talking bad about his brother. He's a man in his 30s who just lost his career for what appears to be a foolish decision and is needing to think about what he wants to do. This plot is the exact opposite of what I would call bombastic, where even with our main character hoping to get to space, it feels very grounded in its storytelling. Talking to friends and family to look back at the confidence that you somehow lost as life went on. Going through the trials to become an astronaut. A thoughtful and heartfelt brotherly relationship. While some series could focus on the negatives of Muta's situation and really drive that home and make this story really sad and depressing, this series weaves a thread of hope through this entire first volume and keeps the whole situation feeling incredibly uplifting, despite the trials that Muta is facing. We focus on his growth as a character through this first volume, he's very much it feels a stand-in for the everyman. With Space Brothers first chapter debuting in 2007, Japan was still facing the recession that had begun in the early 90s when their economic bubble burst. Many people around Muta's age, who were just as bright and were faced with an uncertain future, looked down on themselves and their decisions for their failures. It's why I really appreciate the character of Aunt Sharon in this series. The scene with the trumpet where she reminds Muta of how he used to face challenges head on and that he still has that spirit in him really struck a chord with me. It's why I feel this story not only resonates with, you know, Japanese men of the late aughts, but is also something that millennials of the now, as well as the Gen Z, can empathize with. It's something that people can relate to, especially in you know, these times. And while I can't speak much on the other characters, since we're just getting introduced to them and there's not too much focus on them through this first volume, I loved all the little touches that were sprinkled throughout it. Hibito and Muta still have a love and respect for each other, despite Hibito's incredible success in their initially shared dream. Serika, keeping a journal and seeing the reflection of her father's experience and those around her, as well as taking a little bit of a note from Muta and staring into the astronaut helmet. Muta and Hibito's mom sending kimchi with Muta to Texas because if he goes to Texas, apparently time turns backwards and that's how you get more time out of the kimchi. These small touches of personality really help everyone shine where maybe the art does not. I would say the art is probably the weakest part of at least this first volume of Space Brothers. I cannot speak to later volumes as this is all that I have read. 
And while the art is not ugly by any stretch, it's got some very strange moments as far as perspective and even some character designs. Though there are some genuinely fantastic moments, particularly with expressions. Some of the faces Muta makes are so horrifically ugly on purpose, they had me just cackling as I was reading this volume. The series is something really special and it takes the time to breathe. It's a story that doesn't rush to get to the brothers discovering the weird spaceship they see at the beginning of this volume. Sorry about forgetting to mention that, but yeah, the reason they want to become astronauts is because at the beginning of this volume, you see that the brothers see, you know, a, a UFO in the sky that flies to the moon. That's what inspires them. It's something so like, you know, it could just be something that they saw in the night sky as kids, but you don't know. It's something really touching and just, even though it's fantastical, it doesn't feel as such. The volume's more interested in letting us know how our characters exist in the world around them. And I think it's honestly more special for that. And I'm not the only one who thinks it's special. There's been a 99 episode anime, as well as a live action adaptation for this series. It has been nominated for the Manga Taisho Awards twice, once in 2009 and once in 2010. It won Best General Manga at the 56th Shogakukan Manga Awards, and shared Best General Manga Award with March Comes In Like a Lion at the Kodansha Manga Awards in 2011, as well as the Reader Prize for the 18th Annual Tezuka Osamu Cultural Prize. There's even an asteroid named after the creator. That's just wild. There's also been multiple instances where even NASA has partnered with Space Brothers to create merchandise. The series is available through various subscription services. And I personally utilize Kindle Unlimited, which has up to volume 19 and various individual chapters. I'm not certain if those individual chapters go past the volume 19. Or if you're interested in Simulpub, uh, maybe you're up to date. It is also available from Crunchyroll. Um, I will link the series page in the description below from Kodansha. So maybe if you utilize any uh, subscription services, you can see if the one you use is on their list. Anyway, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this di little dive into the first volume of Space Brothers. I didn't get to cover too much because it is a very dense volume so I would recommend giving it a read seeing if it's for you it feels very much like a, like a serialized TV show that you would see in the West you know something where you can maybe read a, a volume here or there and then be content for a while and I think you know sometimes you need just that anyhow thanks for listening and I hope to see you in the next video.